ओम भूरभुव स्व तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देव से धीमह धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्ते माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो ऑन द कोट्स ऑफ आदि शंकराचार्य आदि शंकराचार्य हैज रिटन मेनी होली बुक्स ऑन वेदांता एंड सनातना धर्मा हिज ईच एंड एवरी वर्ड एंड कोट इज वेरी वेल्युएबल एंड इट हेल्प्स द साध काज टू अंडरस्टैंड द वेज एंड मीन्स फॉर देयर साधना फॉर सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड लिबरेशन सो आई स्टार्ट द वीडियो शंकरा सेज फॉर गिव मी ओ शिवा माई थ्री ग्रेट सीन्स आई केम ऑन ए पिलग्रीमेज टू काशी forgetting that you are omnipresent in thinking about you i forgot that you are beyond thought in praying to you i forgot that you are beyond words realizing everything to be brahma itself the wise man should then dwell in eternal bliss with his mind full of the a sense of pure consciousness consciousness just as it is water alone that appears as waves and tides so does the self alone appear as many universes the self always shines as unconditioned for the wise and always as conditioned for the ignorant the distinction between the self and the not self that is body is unnecessary for the wise smadi whose other name is knowledge is the forgetfulness of all mental activity by first making thought changeless and then identifying the consciousness with brahma the sun shines on the earthen pot but as the sun is not destroyed when the earthen pot is destroyed in the same way the soul gives light to body and the soul is also not destroyed when the body is dead our own sense organs are our enemies but it's but if won over they turn to be friends he is truly rich who is fully contented he has won the world who has won his mind youth wealth and age are unstable like the drops of water on lotus leaves the annihilation of ignorance is salvation the charity at right time is precious truth is that which helps the living beings one's own pure mind is the greatest pilgrimage that is knowledge that helps in getting united to the brahma o lord even after realizing that the truth that there is no real difference between jiva and brahma i beg to state that i am yours and not that you are mine the wave belongs to the ocean not the ocean to the waves when the same god resides in you in me and in others how can you become intolerant and get angry with the samon he is the knower of the self to whom the ideas of me and mine have become quite meaningless external attachment is attachment to sense objects internal attachment is self identification with the ego and the modifications of the mind the dispassionate man 
absorbingly devoted to Burma is alone able to renounce both. He who has known the reality of Burma cannot continue to feel attachment to this world. He who feels attachment has not known Burma. He remains deluded and sense-bound. Like an image in a dream, the world is troubled by love, hatred, and other poisons. So long as the dream lasts, the image appears to be real, but on awaking it vanishes. In consequence of possessing diverse attributes, the supreme existence appears manifold, but when the attributes are annihilated, unity is restored. In consequence of those diverse attributes, a variety of names and conditions are supposed proper to the spirit, just as a variety of tastes and colors are attributed to water. When a great soul has found perfect tranquility by freeing his mind from all distracting thoughts and completely realizing Brahma, then he no longer needs sacred places, more moral disciplines, set hours, posters, <clears throat> directions or objects for his meditation. His knowledge of the Atma depends upon no special circumstances or conditions. There is a self-existence reality. That reality is the witness of the three states of consciousness. That reality is the knower in all states of consciousness, waking, dreaming and dreamless sleep. It is the self. The nature of one reality must be known by one's own clear spiritual perception. It cannot be known through a priest or saint. Similarly, the form of the moon can only be known through one's own eyes. How can it be known through others? It is ignorance that causes us to identify ourselves with the body, the ego, the sense or anything that is not the Atma. He is wise who overcomes this ignorance by devotion to the Atma. Treasure hidden beneath the ground does not come out by merely calling out its name. Treasure is found through competent instruction, excavation, the removal of stones and such other things lying about. Similarly, the transparent truth of the self which is hidden by Maya and its effect is to be attained through the instructions of a knower of a Brahma, followed by reflection, meditation and so forth. Truth of the self cannot be attained through perverted arguments. This is Vivek Sudamani, stanza number 65. The first step in liberation is the extreme aversion to all perishable things, then follow calmness, self-control and forbearance. Vivek Sudamani, stanza number 69. Those fools who are tied to the sense objects by the stout cord of attachment, which is ev every difficult to snap, undergo numerous births and death and countless miseries. Vivek Chudamani 75. He who has conquered the sense objects alone is fit for liberation. Vivek Chudamani stanza 78. Sense objects in the form of sharp drowned devotees who attempt to cross the ocean of samsara. This shark can only be killed with this sword of dispassion. Vivek Sudamani 78-80 Perception of an object is but oblation to the fire of knowledge. When memory appears, it forms a show of something seen before, a distance something not now here. The seer, seeing and the seen, of these each is pure consciousness, with that reality is found. Whatever is not that alone is like a flower in the sky, it is not really there at all. I am that unmixed absolute, just that one perfect happiness attained in depth of dreamless sleep. 
I am not the jiva, but I am peace because my Guru has said so. Acceptance by firm judgment as true of what the scriptures and the Guru instruct is called by sages sardha or faith by means of which the reality is perceived. Maya is God's eternal higher power and consisting of three moods. The entire world is created by it. Sages infer it from its acts. It is neither existence nor non-existence nor both. It is neither united nor not united nor both. It is neither with parts nor without parts nor both. It is highly prodigious and defies description. It is obviated only by the knowledge of pure Brahma, one without a second. It has three characteristics modes, sattva, rajas, and tamas, well distinguished from one another by their acts. Although Brahma manifests himself in the cosmos, he still, he still transcends it. Yoga, union is really the yoga, disunion, for in this state the yogi is disconnected, detached from all troubles. That which is revealed completely to one established in Samadhi by negation through statements like not this, not this, that which is beyond the three states of consciousness, the one non-dual I am indeed that supreme eternal Brahma. Adi Sankracharya's concept of Advaita or Absolute Monism. The Supreme Spirit or the Brahma is alone real and the individual self is only the Supreme Self and no other. Brahma is a Supreme Intelligence devoid of attributes, form, changes or limitations. It is self-luminous and all-pervading and is without a second. The empirical world is unreal and illusion born of ignorance. The jiva continues in samsara only as long as it retains attachment due to ignorance or maya. If it casts off the veil of maya through knowledge or jnana, it will realize its identity with the Brahma and get merged into it. Say not that it is one, as there can be no second, nothing other than that. There is neither uniqueness nor commonality, neither entity nor non-entity. This secondless one is neither void nor plenum. How can I convey this supreme wisdom? Source, man current in Indian culture by S. Natarajan. Silence is the first door to spiritual eminence, Adi Sankracharya in Vevai Kachudamani. As ritual practices continue, it becomes a fad to make the ritual performance glamorous and gracefully more advanced and elaborate practices are introduced. At this stage, these ritualistic practices are no longer a means either of channeling devotional feelings or of fueling spiritual unfoldment. They become social events, a form of entertainment and a way to display social status. These practices become cultural activities, but even before they degenerate into cultural activities, these ritual practices have little or no spiritual value. Source, the tradition of the Himalayan masters Pandit Rajmani. Spirituality declines when it falls into the hands of people who are weak and without control over their senses. Sankracharya in his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 stanza 2. Bhajgovind quotes, the company of the good wins away from false attachments. When attachment is lost, delusion ends. When delusion ends, the mind becomes unwavering and steady. 
an unwavering and steady mind is merited for jeevan mukti liberation even in this life don't identify with wealth relatives your youth or your physical beauty all those can be lost in a second knowing that all those are maya may you realize brahma one may have bathed in the holy ganges or even in the ganga sagar he may have performed many charities and observed many vows yet unless one has understood the brahma truth he will not gain moksha even after a hundred lives who can disturb the peace and happiness of a man if he has the true spirit of renunciation and has controlled his desires even if he be the poorest sleeping only in the temple halls or under trees or on the bare ground and just with a deer skin to cover give up the desire that you should get a lot of money fill up your desireless mind with good thoughts be satisfied in your mind with the wealth that comes along with your karma the water drop playing on a lotus petal has an extremely uncertain existence so also is life ever unstable understand the very world is consumed by disease and conceit and is riddled with pangs seeing the seductive female form do not fall prey to frenzied delusion the form is only a modification of flesh and fat think well thus in your mind again and again as long as you have the ability to earn money so long will you dependent be so long will your dependence be attached to you after that when you live within in firm body no one would even speak to you a word bhaj govind is a devotional composition in sanskrit by adi shankaracharya adi shankaracharya quotes on advaita vedanta mind nor intellect nor ego feeling sky nor earth not metals am i i am he i am he blessed is spirit i am he who is your wife who is your son strange is the sansara of whom are you where have you come from brother ponder over these truths Adi Shankaracharya quotes on Bhagavad Gita from a clear knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita all the goals of human existence become fulfilled Bhagavad Gita is the manifest quint essence of all the teachings of the Vedic scriptures there are many who go with matted locks many who have clean shaven heads many whose hairs have been plucked out some are clothed in saffron yet others in various colors all just for a livelihood seeing truth revealed before them still the foolish ones see it not worship govinda worship govinda worship govinda o oh, fool rules of grammar will not save you at the time of your death adi shankaracharya teaching on guru in bhaj govindam trust yourself wholly to the lotus feet of the guru freed from the shackles of sansara with your senses and mind controlled in this manner you will see god residing in your heart please note that which helps in realizing the brahma in you is the real guru guru can be a human or a living or non living being it can be even a combination of any of these adi shankaracharya quotes on brahma before knowing brahma every being himself being brahma is really already identical with the totality but ignorance superimposes on every being the idea that he is not brahma that he is not the totality we should abandon the idea that we are not brahma not to be the whole this is the idea 
this is due to ignorance this idea is removed by the knowledge of dharma but the knowledge of dharma cannot create nor in annihilate a real entity we are nothing but atma nothing but dharma who is always the same homogeneous one and without a second immutable unborn free from decay immortal inaccessible to fear therefore the expression he is merged in brahma is only a figurative expression merely indicating the rupture which is the result of the knowledge of the uninterrupted chain of reincarnation for the man who until then had maintained an opposite view source the commentary on the brahmadharnaka upanishad by adi sankracharya four prerequisites for the seeker of moksha according to adi sankracharya adi sankracharya talks in brahma sutra bhashya about four requirements that is needed in advance to the seeker of moksha they are number one discrimination between the eternal and the non-eternal two dispassion for the enjoyment of the fruits of actions either here on um, or in the other world three possession of control of mind and senses turning away from things of senses and developing forbearance concentration and faith four desire for liberation source life and teachings of adi sankracharya adi sankracharya quotes how to remove ignorance outward ritual cannot destroy ignorance because they are mutually contradictory knowledge attained attained through self realization alone destroys ignorance knowledge cannot spring up by any other means than inquiry who am i how was the universe born who is the maker what is the material cause this is the kind of inquiry one should do when the mind is purified like a mirror knowledge is revealed in it care should therefore be taken to purify the mind action cannot destroy ignorance for it is not in conflict with ignorance knowledge alone destroys ignorance as light destroys darkness just as a jar is all earthy so is also the body all consciousness the division therefore into self and non self is made by the ignorant to no purpose for a peaceful life quotes from sadhana panchakam of adi sankracharya study the scriptures daily thereafter perform the duties enjoined in them dedicate your actions to the lord banish all desires from your mind cleanse your heart of all sins try to see the faults and illusory nature of the worldly pleasure pursue the knowledge of the self since sincerely get released from the bondage of your home soon means to attain bliss while living on earth be firm in your devotion to god inculcate and enhance the virtues of mental quiet quietude renounce all selfish actions the atma is one without a second the self reveals itself to the pure minded it is self luminous though it is one it is seen as many in different intellect just like the sun through only one though only one is seen reflected in the waters of different pots i am the self which is of nature of eternal knowledge hastmal kiyam six of adi sankara charya atma is one without a second it reveals itself to the pure minded people objects like pot and cloth are inert hence they require another light to illumine them 
but the atma is of the nature of light just as the sun is self luminous and does not require any other light even so the self luminous atma does not require any other light to reveal its existence sun is one but it has many reflections in different water parts even so the atma is one but is seen as many wild reflection in different intellects i am that atma which is of the nature of eternal knowledge nirguna manasa puja quotes adi sankracharya disciple asks a question where is the invocation avahan of the fullness and the seat asana of the all supporting how is their washing of the feet padaya offering of water argya and sipping atmana for the limpid and pure one disciple doubts how he can perform puja and other rituals to the formless brahma guru clears his doubts by explaining the symbolisms in rituals guru replies i worship the symbol of the self atma linga shining like a jewel and situated in the heart lotus within the city of illusion with the evolutions abhisheka of the unsullied mind from the river of faith always with the flowers of smadi for the sake of non rebirth i am the one the ultimate thus one should invoke ahvayate lord shiva then one should prepare the seat asana that is thinking of the self established self i have no contact with the dust of virtue and sin thus should the wise one offer washing of the feet padaya that is such knowledge destroying all sins one should pour forth that handful of water which is the root ignorance held from time without beginning this is verily the water offering argya of the symbol of the self indra and other beings drink only the tiny fraction of a drop from the waves of the bliss ocean of dharma that meditation is considered as the sipping atmana quotes from atma bodha of adi sankracharya just as the fire is the direct cause for cooking so without knowledge no emancipation can be had compared with all other forms of discipline knowledge of the self is the one direct means of liberation action cannot destroy ignorance for it is not in conflict with or opposed to ignorance knowledge does verily destroy ignorance as light destroys deep darkness the soul appears to be finite because of ignorance when ignorance is destroyed the self which does not admit of any multiplicity truly reveals itself by itself like the sun when the clouds pass away constant practice of knowledge purifies the self jivatma stand by ignorance and then disappears itself as the powder of the katka nut settles down after it has cleansed the muddy water quotes from dakshina murti stotra of adi sankracharya the word seems to be different from supreme self but not so he gives moksha for those who realize that what is there in the world is there in the individual self the knowledge of the supreme self pass through every individual and universe like the light rays of a lamp when covered by a pot with many holes people who consider the body senses and ego as the self are blind deluded in maya those who come out of this illusion attain moksha hast malka quotes all the creatures in this world wish to experience only happiness but worldly happiness born out of the contact between the senses and the objects has two defects number 1 it is always attended with unavoidable misery and second it is not eternal some rare virtuous people comprehend this fact and regard worldly happiness as misery itself 
so they develop dispassion and try to come out of the cycle of repeated birth and death which is caused by ignorance of the self quotes from manisha panchakam of adi sankra manisha panchakam is a sanskrit text in the form of questions written by adi sankra and it brings out the essence of advaita vedanta it consists of questions asked by a chandala and the answers given by sankra charya if a person has attained the firm knowledge that he is not an object of perception but is that pure consciousness which shines clearly in the states of waking dream and deep sleep and which as the witness of the whole universe dwells in all bodies from that of the creator brahma to that of the aunt then he is my guru irrespective of whether he is an outcast or a brahma this is my conviction i am brahma pure consciousness it is pure consciousness that appears at as is this universe all this universe is only something conjured by me because of avidya nisans which is composed of three gunas sattva rajas and tamas one who has attained this definite realization about brahma which is bliss itself eternal supreme and pure is my guru whether he is an outcast or a brahmana so here ends this video my dear friends please share this videos with your friends family members your children and like and comment and subscribe the channel namaste my dear friends namaste